Hi everyone, welcome back to the Talking Money with Nozi podcast. Today's episode is about following a written budget and it is part two of a series of five personal finance basics episodes. I will also be answering an interesting question that I received from a listener. But before I get started, please remember that the information shared here is for educational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast should not be considered financial advice. Please consult with a certified financial planner before making any financial decisions. Back to the podcast. To handle your money properly, you must follow a written budget. And guys, I really mean it when I say your budget must be written down. Don't try to budget using only your memory because honestly speaking, our memory is not that great. Think about it. You most likely don't remember what you had for breakfast last week, Monday. And if you can't remember a simple thing like that, what about all the ins and outs of your bank account? Also, writing things down makes them more serious because it is visible and you are more likely to commit to your budget compared to just storing it somewhere in the back of your mind with all the other things that you've stored but have never actually gotten around to doing them. You can write your budget using the old school way of pen and paper or you can use apps like 227. Personally, I use Microsoft Excel on my laptop and I update my budget on a weekly basis. Budgeting gives you a roadmap for managing your income and expenses properly. By creating and following a budget, you get a clear picture of where your money is going every month instead of wondering where all your money went. Budgeting helps you to prioritize financial goals, whether those goals are paying off debt, saving for emergencies, or investing for your future. Budgeting also shows you whether you need to earn more money or whether you need to reduce or get rid of expenses. Sometimes you may think that you don't earn enough money and you need a salary increase. But doing a budget is really eye-opening because it will show you areas where you're wasting money. Once you remove the wastage, it's going to feel like you got a salary increase. And guys, it is far easier to reduce wasteful spending than to increase your salary. Before I started budgeting, I used to think of it as a form of punishment or deprivation. And to be honest, I was a little bit scared to confront my finances because I knew I would find embarrassing spending habits if I looked too closely, right? But I had a change of heart when I finally accepted that reaching financial freedom would require me to do uncomfortable things like budgeting and changing my spending behavior. Of course, my mindset towards budgeting completely changed after a few months of doing it because budgeting, instead of being a punishment, actually empowered me to take control of my finances. Of course, some people do not earn enough money, right? If you need to earn more money, please listen to my previous episode about growing your income. But remember, earning more money does not cancel the need for a budget. You still need to follow a budget to handle your higher income as well. So what is the easiest way to budget? There is a budgeting rule called the 50-30-20 rule. This rule says 50% of your net income which is your income after taxes, should go towards essentials like rent, water, electricity, groceries, transport, you know, the important stuff. 30% of your income should go to discretionary expenses like eating out, shopping for clothes, even giving falls under this category. Then 20% of your income should go towards paying down debt, towards saving for emergencies and preparing for retirement. The 50-30-20 rule is only a guideline and you should adjust it to fit your circumstances. Maybe you would be more comfortable with a 60-20-20 rule or a 70-20-10 rule, for example. Whatever it is, make it work for you. Next, I am going to play a listener's question which fits in perfectly with today's topic about budgeting. Hi, Ms. Nosipo. Um, the topic I would like you to talk about is how to survive black tax. I would like you to talk about it. And it's because it's something that I'm suffering from. That's kind of in my way of having a good relationship with money. I'm not sure if the voice note was clear enough for you to hear. But essentially, the question is about black tax. 
the listener is asking how to survive black tax because it is affecting her relationship with money. For those of you that don't know, black tax is a phenomenon where because of our dark history, people from disadvantaged backgrounds must work twice or three times as hard as other people just to get the same things because their income supports multiple family members beyond their immediate family. It is called black tax because of the amount of support that is needed. This is not just simply helping your parents here and there. Many times the financial support goes beyond just helping parents. It even involves many other family members. This impacts a person's ability to save, invest and pass down generational wealth. As human beings, we are social creatures and we don't live in a vacuum. Our parents and other family members struggled to raise us and it is only natural to help them once we become established financially. But having said that, black tax must not perpetuate a never ending cycle of dependency where your parents and extended family are financially dependent on you and then you eventually become dependent on your children and other family members. And then your children become dependent on their children and on and on and on. Black tax should not fuel addictions and bad spending habits. Black tax should not prevent you from saving and investing for your future. Let's talk about how to handle black tax in a way that is not harmful to your own financial future. First, you need to follow your budget and put money aside for yourself first. I hope you now appreciate the importance of budgeting. Give what is left after you've saved for financial emergencies and invested for your future. Make sure that you'll be independent in your old age. Otherwise, you are going to perpetuate the cycle of dependency. Setting aside your savings and investments first is not selfish. I have to say this because many people neglect their financial future because they feel guilty for putting aside money. I want to give this example to explain why you cannot afford not to put aside money for yourself. For those that have ever flown, you know that there is always a safety demonstration before the flight takes off. The flight attendant shows you what to do in case of an emergency. One of the instructions is that if the pressure in the cabin drops during the flight, you should put on your oxygen mask first before helping others. Even if others in that scenario is your own child. But isn't it selfish to wear your oxygen mask before your child? No, it is not. You must make sure that you are safe first. Because if you ran out of oxygen, you wouldn't be able to help anybody else with their oxygen mask because you collapse, right? Now let's apply this example to your finances. If you don't help yourself first by putting away money first, you will eventually get to a point where you won't be able to help anybody else. The second thing is you need to have enough insurance for unfortunate events. You don't want your dependents like your spouse, your parents or your children to suffer financially in addition to emotional trauma when you are no longer here. Make sure that your kids would be well taken care of and still afford to go to school even after you pass away. This is why getting proper insurance like life cover is absolutely important while you have young kids under your care. The third thing is that you need to talk about your budget with your family. Remember, your income is limited. So you must pick certain things that you are willing to support and tell your family that this is what your budget allows. For example, let them know that you can only afford to help pay for your siblings' education or you can only help your parents to start a small business that will sustain itself. Being open and honest about what you can and cannot afford will help you to avoid being overwhelmed by never ending and petty financial requests for non-essential items. And then lastly, let everybody take responsibility. Let it be known upfront when you expect to see the fruit of helping someone. So for example, if you are paying for somebody's school fees, let it be clear to that student that they need to work hard so that they complete their education on time and then they can start supporting themselves financially. Remember, the ultimate goal is to empower people, 
not to spoon feed them and fuel bad habits and create financial dependency. Also, since you are making sacrifices to help your immediate family, they too must make sacrifices so that whatever you give them should stretch and last them longer. They cannot waste money. They cannot be reckless with the money that you give them. It is not fair. I know that conversations about money are not easy. There is fear, there is guilt, and there's often shame associated with money, right? But if you want to be happy and to thrive financially, you need to be brave enough and have these difficult conversations. It is important. The sooner you have these difficult conversations, the better, okay? Before you create impossible habits and impossible expectations, and then you overburden yourself. Now you're stressed. Now you are not achieving your goals, etc. Okay, guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you to the listener who sent in such an important question. If you want to also send your questions to me, please WhatsApp 072-586-2827 and I'll be addressing those questions in upcoming episodes. Also, please remember to follow this podcast on Spotify and leave your five-star review. Until next time, keep talking money.